everyone, it's Robin, the Artsy Bohemian. I'm in my studio in Los Angeles, California, and today I am going to make a book cover from toilet paper rolls and junk mail. And it, the, the idea occurred to me from looking at um, Somerset Studio magazines and a post that I saw from one of their magazines. So the actual magazine, which is the current one, which I'll show you in a minute, and then um, another article from 2018. And the gal used, um, I, I believe her name is Lynn Moncrief or Moncrief. Um, she's from Norway, I believe. I'll, I'll double check. But she made, you know, everybody knows that you can use t toilet paper rolls to make cute little um, journals. And um, so I thought, well, what, you know, I've always wanted to utilize toilet paper rolls in a bigger way. And so this may not be new. I, I just thought I, I don't know, it just kind of came to me. But like I said, it might not be a new idea. So I'm going to show you two ways that um, I thought would be fun to construct the foundation of a junk journal. And then we'll proceed once we have all the pieces together. We're going to make a really fun cover and also make an exposed spine junk journal. So I'm really excited about it. It might be a series. It might take a few um, weeks to do this, but there'll be time in between to make sure things are dry and, um, you know, after we paint them or Mod Podge or whatever we're going to be doing with them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is, um, and I already started this, is I just took some toilet paper rolls and I cut them in half. And I'm going to show you, you can do it two ways. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can glue it. If you have a sewing machine, then you can, you know, sew it. So you're going to straighten out uh, several of these, depending on how long you want your um, book. And the book I'm making is kind of going to be like a folio. So it's going to be fairly long. I, I thought that five, at least five toilet paper rolls would be good, but I'm doubling it. So it's going to be 10 actually. So five in a row um, and then five in a row on the bottom. So uh, what I did was I have several of these that I already cut up. I mean uh, cut in half. And I layered them about a quarter of an inch side to side. And I zig made a zigzag and then I did another one and then another one and another one until I had a whole row of toilet paper rolls that were sewn together. And then I'm going to do another row on the bottom and I will be back um, and show you what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to make a whole other roll like this all sewn together and then I'm going to sew that next roll to the top here. And um, I'm going to reinforce it with junk mail. So we all have junk mail. Um, we throw it away, which is just a huge waste of our resources. But um, let's make something fun. Let's make a real junk journal with some junk. Okay, so I sewed another panel of five toilet paper rolls. And I have this one here. And I purposely left this, the uh, thread hanging on the sides, so um, I'm going to make sure it's hanging on the other, on the opposite side, because I like that look. And I, and who knows, it might, I might chop it off at some point. But now I'm going to line these up as best as I can and do one stitch all the way down. And there, it's a little bit crooked. That's okay. I can just cut off the excess. Okay, so now I'm going to um, cover the sheet that I made with, uh, that I sewed several panels together. And there's, again, there's 10 all together. I'm, I, this is a little bit too long for me, so I'm probably either gonna cut it or I'll make a pocket. But I, it's, it's fun just to make it bigger than you need because then you can use the extra for 
little tuck spots or little collages. I, I already uh, covered the back. It's still pretty wet, but I'm going to do this side now. And I did use a mixture of some junk mail here. I didn't use any of the colorful. I didn't have any other junk mail to use right now. And the one pieces that I did have were too colorful. And I I want to make this more neutral. I want to do the shabby chic look. So that's why I'm using vintage. And we're still recycling using, you know, old uh, music paper and book pages and stuff. So I'm using uh, a matte medium. You can use something like Mod Podge. Um, it's good to use matte um, because it, it lays a really nice uh, foundation. And it lets you adhere other, you know, p pieces of paper if you're going to do that. Or you can paint on it, which I'll probably wind up doing a coat of gesso, either clear or white or black. I'm not exactly sure. But um, that's what I'm going to do on here. And it's always kind of fun to have some kind of uh, print that's going to go with the theme that you have. So I'm going to just lay this down and keep pushing it down. You can take a bone folder if you want and make sure all the edges are down and just kind of go over it. I'm going to keep doing that here. And I'm going to tear this edge. Just gonna keep covering the whole thing with uh, pieces that I put the matte medium on and then pasting them down to the panel here. So keep doing that. Make sure everything's pressed down and let it dry thoroughly. Cover the whole thing. And like I said, you can use uh, you can use junk mail that's colorful. Just know that it's going to show through unless you paint over it. Um, which I probably the the other panel that I made um, the smaller one. I'll probably do that the the, the more colorful one. This one's going to be more shabby chic with lace and whites and stuff like that. Okay, so now I have six pieces um, that I cut in half and I flattened them out already. And I'm going to glue these ones. So those of you who don't have a sewing machine or don't like to sew, um, this is for you. And we'll do. We're probably going to make two journals then, since we'll have two. Um, sheets of you know recycled cardboard for a journal so um this glue is great somebody asked me what my favorite glue was and i didn't answer right away and when i when that happens that means i either forget or i can't find the email or the <laughs> the question in the first place so this is my favorite glue right now you can get it on amazon or any um store that sells bookmaking supplies it's ph new neutral pva uh, professional quality archival adhesive and it dries clear remains flexible ideal for book binding and paper projects um it's it really does um dry quickly too so i'm just kind of i was just holding that down and it's by lynetco see if you can see that So that's what I'm using, and that's what I've been using. I do like fabric tack, but it drives me crazy because, for one thing, it smells bad, and then also it just has this horrible um, thing it does where it lavas up and spills all over the place, so I kind of stopped using that. Oh, and this one's a little bit too. So this is uneven, so we'll just deal with that when, it, when we have to. So I'm going to do two rows of these, glue them all together, and then I'll probably glue these together. Oops. So obviously when you sew it, it's 
doesn't come apart like that so you just have to kind of be patient I'm gonna re put some glue back on that <clears throat> And then I always think it's better to make things bigger than what you need because you can always cut it away or make pockets with the excess. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing with both of these um, foundations that I'm making. So I'll be right back. I'm going to glue these all together and then glue them all down together um, to make one big piece. Okay, so I have just a little bit left here this little bit here to um, collage on, but most of it you can see I just pieced together uh, the papers and then glued the backs of them and then just pressed them onto the cover. And it's really wet, it's very wet, so it's gonna take a little time to dry out. I'll probably bring it inside of my house because it's warmer in there. It's a little chilly in my studio, which I love. And this is going to be a really fun project. I'm super excited about it. Um, I will show you that article um, in just a minute. Another little piece of paper here. And I'm just, I just took some wax paper and I just put it underneath this to, uh, you know, so it won't get so messy. Because right now everything's getting messy. This is a messy process using Mod Podge or any kind of uh, matte medium. Uh, as much as I try not to get it on my fingers, I still do. And it just, for some reason, it's kind of difficult to get off. You have to kind of scrub it off with soap and water once you're done. It's not like regular glue where you can just kind of peel it off your skin. It kind of just sticks there. So, I'm going to let that dry. And, um, yeah, we'll have a great piece of handmade, you know, paper, cardboard, whatever you want to call it, for our journal. And we used recycled materials for it. So this is the issue that I'm inspired by to make the exposed spine. I'm going to show you the article. This is from, um, let's see, it's November, December, January 2021. And it has this beautiful painting on it. And this is the book I'm inspired by. Michelle Ward. She is a well-known um, contributor to Somerset Studio. And I love this concept of this open spine. As with these types of articles, they're, they're a little vague because they have so much... They only have so much they can write, but um, I'm not don't really like these this color combination. But it's the same book. It's just this one is the one I was really excited about because of the colors. They're more muted earth tone greens and tans and pretty just really pretty colors that I prefer. So you can kind of see it's a, a folio like I was talking about, and. Uh, she kind of tells you how to make it. So there's the exposed spine. And I just thought it would be a fun challenge. I have never made an exposed spine. And then here's some uh, of the collage papers that they give you in the book. So who knows, I might incorporate that. But I am going to be doing one in like the neutral earth tones with laces. And then I'm going to be doing a colorful one, which is this one here. So this is the smaller... Um, panel that I made of toilet paper rolls and I'm just going to be using a Joann's flyer that's very old probably from last year sometime and I'm going to glue this down and 
and we'll see how this glossy paper works. I'm not sure how well this will be, but I could always, I, you know, I'm going to put some gesso on top anyway, so it'll give it a, a tooth. And I'm using the uh, gesso, I mean the um, matte medium for this as well. Let me just do a half page at a time and then the other half so it doesn't dry up so fast. the paper will soak up the moisture really quick. If you um, have a brayer, you can use that to, you know, get all the air bubbles out. If you don't, just use your hand or a bone folder or, you know, the edge of your paintbrush. And just keep doing the same thing. Cover the whole thing with these papers. And I will be back when it's done. All right, so this is dry. Had to, uh, it had to dry overnight. So it's nice and dry. And there's, it's all bumpy, which I really like. And it has the threads. This is the one I had sewed the panels together. And then this is just the junk mail one. They look really ugly right now, but they're going to look really cool um, after we paint them and decorate them. So this one I'm going to do black on both sides um, because I, I think I want to do some bold bright painting on it and I like using black as a background sometimes for paintings so this one we're going to start with white both of them are going to be gesso and for those of you who are new to this type of painting gesso has a grit to it and um it's like white paint but it has a, a grit to it and it lets your paint stick to the uh, medium the surface that you're working on so there's a couple of things that you can do you if you have a palette knife you can take it and squish it on here and just kind of do this you could take a brayer which i might do a little bit on here too if you don't have a palette knife just get a piece of uh, um, scrap cardboard and scrape it on there You could paint it as well with a paintbrush. This just gives it a little interesting texture when you do this on here. <laughs> so I could take this piece of cardboard, for example, and do this. I have to let each side dry before I do the next so you know these things don't happen super quick because we have to let things dry and we'll see how far I get um, with this particular video like I said it's going to be a few it's going to be a series of videos which is always fun and I hope you uh, decide to work along with me as I do this so we're going to just build up layers um, and just take it, you know, each layer at a time and see what we'll, we'll be doing for the next layer. 
and you can see I'm not putting a lot of paint. I'm kind of scraping the paint on the sides here so I can put some over here. It kind of adds interest. And just so dries pretty fast, so. not adding any water. It'll just take longer to dry. You can always get the paint out with um, a, a tongue depressor or popsicle stick as well, or just a, a paintbrush. this one dry and then I'm going to do the other one black. Once this dries I'm just going to do the same thing on the back. You don't need to see me do the whole thing. It's nice and opaque. I think I'll use my paintbrush for this. Might even just uh, make some interesting marks on here once it's wet. Kind of like when you were a kid and you would color a page, a piece of paper all in different colors with the crayon and then put the black on top, the black crayon, and then scrape away, you know, that, that neat thing that we used to do. Wow, really great coverage. So let's see here, let's take I'm going to paint the back sides of both of those and I'll be back. Okay, so it's all painted on the front and the back and I really like this side better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, mark and score the areas where I'm going to fold it and then that way it'll give me an idea of where the front and the back are and what the binding is going to look like so that I can decorate it even further. So this is going to be the front part of the journal um, but you know who knows it might change um, but that's what I'm going to be doing right now so this is a scoreboard that I'm using and I want to make this simple so I'm going to use a piece of 8 by 11 and a half I mean 11 by 8 and a half uh, paper to use as a guide because I want to make it small I want to make it kind of chunky and easy so that I can just take a uh, regular paper and fold it in half twice and then um, use it as my signature. Um, I might also be using watercolor paper in here too. And even though this is really wonky and um, you know the paper is uneven on most of the sides, I don't really mind. I kind of want it looking a little tattered. <clears throat> um, so let's go ahead and do this. So the, the way that I'm going to do this, and this is a complete experiment. I don't know if this is going to work, but I, um, I'm just going to go for it. 
So I'm. this is four and a quarter wide. So I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch and score it at four and a half. And I think I'm going to make my spine one and a half inches in um, width. So here's four and a half. And this is going to be a little difficult because this is painted and it's kind of thick. So I'm going to try to do my best to score this. So I decided to kind of mark it at four and a half so I can score it somewhat evenly. I'm just going to mark it with a pencil and it's pretty good so far. This paper is kind of chipping off, but that'll just add to the character of it. And I can always glue it back down. Let's see if this will work. Oop. So from here, I'm going to make a one and a half inch spine. This is four and a half inches, and then I'm going to go to five and a half to six inches here, so that makes it one and a half. I think the best thing to do is I mean, to make this super easy, I could just trim off the edges, but I don't want that look. I want it to be tattered, so it's a little bit trickier to do it this way. So bear with me. And this is four and a half. This is six. here to make it easier to line up the score. From this score, I'm going to do four and a half inches because ultimately it's going to be a trifold. So there's going to be four and a half here. I mean, four, yeah, four and a half, four and a half, another inch and a half spine, and then another 
maybe not quite a four and a half uh, closure. It might be, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half or two. I'll kind of see when I get to that point. Okay, so I'm at six here. And from here, I'm gonna go four and a half. And that will be <clears throat> one, two, three, there's six. So about 10 and a half inches, which is right here. I'll give the measurements down below if this is hard for you to follow for the first score, the second score, the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So from six, I'm going to go to 10 and a half. And this will give me another four and a half inches. So each time I score, I'm going from the last score line. It, for me, it's just easier to do it that way. You might have a better way. So this, I'm gonna scooch in this to the side where it's gonna score properly. starting to come together and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. This isn't going to be this long. I don't like that length. That's too long. I'm going to either bring up the, the bottom and make a pocket or cut it off. I'm not sure yet. And then so the next score line is going to be from this score line from the 10 and a half inch mark and I'm going to go score that. So 10 and a half, 11 and a half, I don't have enough on there, so I'm going to have to, this isn't long enough because it's only 12 inches, so, so I'm just going to mark it with the, the ruler and so on here, since I've pushed the cover to the side, it's at the six inch mark so if I'm gonna do an inch and a half I'm gonna go eight and a half no I mean sorry uh, seven and a half so that is right here and I have to bend this because this is probably gonna be torn off anyway in fact I think I'll just do that This is the six inch mark. It goes all the way down here. And that's seven and a half right here. Probably going to be some more layering and painting on this so this is probably going to be it for this part of the video series but um, I want you to follow me if you feel inclined so 
so we can make this together. I think it's going to be a really cool project when it's done. I know it looks ugly right now and you're probably going, what the hell is she doing? But I think it's going to be pretty cool. Reminds me of like bark from a tree, like birch tree, a birch tree. So there's that. There is the, and I am going to, I'm going to cut that off. Probably right about here. So let's see where that will be. And then I'll save the extra that, um, of course, for pockets and some other doodads for the book, for the journal. So let's see. I'm showing you guys this because this is the type of thing that you guys are always saying. I wanted to see your thought process. So if this is boring, you can just go to the end. <laughs> um, I think two inches. Maybe two and a half. And I might cut it off. We'll see. So two and a half is right here. I like these pencil marks in here. If that those are if this, this is going to bother you, then um, if you're marking it, you can always erase them with the. Oh, what are those erasers called? The kind that are squishy. And that and then I'm gonna rip it so we'll see how that goes I'm going to wet the edges to um, give it a tattered look I have some water over here that I'm adding to the Right now, a little bit. So there's the thread in there that's kind of catching, so I'm just going to cut that. But yeah, I like that. So there's the beginning of our folio. Maybe I'll show one more part. Maybe I'm going to just do the bottom and then we'll call it a Tuesday and work on this next Tuesday. Um, okay, so if this is the same, if I'm going to be putting eight and a half or cutting an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock on paper to put in here. I'm gonna make it about a quarter of an inch longer. This is five and a half inches, I believe. So three, uh, five and three quarters. Let's see what that looks like on this scale here. 
here. <coughs> I'm lining this up because this is gonna, there's gonna be some overage on this, but um, in order to get it fairly accurate, I'm lining it up on this edge before I score it. So this is five and three quarters here. use a um Crooked, so I'm not sure that's gonna. I might need to make it a little bit um, wider. I think what I'm gonna do is just I'm just gonna fold it because this is such a wonky sheet of cardstock that it's uh, a little difficult to score it properly. That's way too big of a pocket, so I'm going to cut that off the same way I did with the score here. I'm going to use some water to soften it. This paper is super old, so it's kind of brittle and breaking, but I like that. So in a minute you'll see what it'll look like. I know it, I do have a plan. It might not be very apparent right now. And the whole idea of this is to use recycle cardboard and you know our junk and papers that we have that we didn't want to throw away. 
So I'm going back and forth and back and forth making it kind of pliable and then I'm going to brush some water on it. parts where it's been sewn, I just have to cut the thread. I have limited space here, so that's why we can't pull the camera back any further. difficult. I'm just going to cut it and then I can rough it up if I want because it's it's just sticking to my, at too many places because of the threads that I used to sew it. So so basically this is what it'll look like like this. I like that. It'll be kind of a chunky folio and I'm going to tape or glue down all these other extra pieces that are kind of coming off. And we'll be making a um, open spine here and adding our signatures next time I see you guys. I um, also had finished the black one, so we'll be working on that at some point as well. And that was all the toilet paper rolls and some junk mail that I had that I um, painted with the black paint. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you follow along. And uh, remember, I have an online school. If you want to learn how to make a junk journal with me, I never show you anything that's in the class um, on my YouTube channel. It's over 20 hours of content, and um, I have over 400 students in that particular class. So check out my online school down below and um, sign up for my newsletter so you can be notified for upcoming classes. I always give really great bonuses and extra goodies when you sign up early. So I will see you in the next video.